Okay, good morning, everyone. I think we'll get going because I'm just conscious of time. So um, I'm sure people can just jump in um, while we uh, go through this intro. So welcome to this uh, Humber Growth Hub ICT for Growth webinar. Uh, my name is Wayne Willis. Thank you for joining us. You're very welcome. It's a very gloomy Friday, chucking it down outside. Um, feels a little bit autumnal. For those that know Whole Fair, it reminds me of the Whole Fair weather. So um, we'll try and make this as, um, as happy and as pleasant as possible. Um, this is all part of the Grow My SME program from the uh, Humber Growth Hub, which is a range of initiatives that they're putting out at the moment to, to help upskill the businesses in the Humber region. Um, and uh, uh, in particular relation to digital and, and, and adopting digital technology um, so that they're able to navigate disruption COVID-19 anyone um, uh, but much wider disruption and um, also grow the business you know we're very much in a, a, a digital first led world we have been for some time now um, but we are um, uh, it, it's only going to grow exponentially and we'll be talking about that as we go through um, uh, Sal Cook yeah thank you yeah, definitely whole fair weather it's uh, yeah it's pretty it's pretty ropey outside hopefully you can't hear it bashing down on my um, on my attic window um, as you can see, we're all still working from home, and so we're making making the best of it at our houses, which is why we've all got strange backgrounds behind us. Uh, but this is all part of the digital thing, and you know, you keep hearing that term "new normal." You know, um, well, you know, we are we are moving very much into that world, and and uh, being able to to work at home, but also collaborate, still continue to come up with new ways to grow business, to to come up with new ways to innovate. This is all going to involve digital technology. And uh, certainly what today is really all about is talking about how you can um, upskill your workforce, upskill your, your business or your colleagues, or maybe you're just a small business and there's only one or two of you in there, how you can uh, arm yourself with the knowledge um, of digital technology. You know, you don't have to be experts in everything, but having, having an awareness of what's out there, what's available and how you can use it. Um, is going to be really important. So my name is Wayne Willis. I'm one of the partners and consultants at uh, Innovation Consultancy Adenic Group. And on the call with us today is my partner, Jamie Del Grosso and Rob Lewis. They're hiding behind the cameras there, but they'll be there in a second. Um, and um, uh, Jamie will be taking us through most of the presentation today. Um, what I would ask is, uh, please ask questions. Um, we really do welcome them. Obviously, everyone's going to have their own scenarios. So as we're going through, if you want to uh, find out stuff that's more, uh, more related to what your business is, or you've got particular things that you don't understand, ask away. We'll try and answer them as we go through. And if not, we'll try and get to them at the end. Um, and as I say, this, this, these webinars are all part of the wider package of the Grow My SME service um, of initiatives offering um, help and support to humble businesses. Um, and they'll link nicely into um, a much more tailored direct support service called the Digital, Digital Catalyst Program. God, it's a mouthful, isn't it, on a Friday morning? Digital Catalyst Program, which uh, we'll be touching upon later on about how you can get involved, how you can get absolute direct support from um, expert consult consultants, including Edenic Group, um, and how we can work with you to um, adopt digital technology and use it to come up with new ways to grow your business and innovate and move forward. So um, ask questions, feel free, um, and we'll we'll get to all the uh, extra support at the end. Um, but at this stage, I think it's a good time to hand over to Jamie and we'll get onto the, uh, the the digital chat. Jamie? Yeah, great. Thanks, Wayne. Um, <clears throat> so as Wayne said, we are part of uh, Adenic Group. Uh, we are an innovation consultancy. Uh, and we work with brands all over the globe to help them develop new innovation solutions, services, and products. And the way we do this is through what we call the three Ds. So the three Ds are our three core principles that we like to uh, teach all of the clients we work with. So that is to be disruptive, think differently, and embrace digital. Uh, so in particular today, what we're going to do is explain a little bit about what we mean by embrace digital. Um, how digital is impacting businesses now, how it will impact uh, businesses in the future, and then how you can learn some of these skills to uh, embrace digital yourself and avoid being disrupted as a company in your own industry. So when we say being digital or embracing digital, what we're talking about is the use of physical or virtual technology to aid in a function or operation. So that can be software that helps you automate your internal processes to make you more efficient. It could be new hardware or, or technology that helps you produce whatever you produce uh, better or faster or at a higher quality. 
or it could be something that you're actually shipping out to your clients. It could be a service that you're offering your clients in a digital format. Um, and just to put into perspective the change that digital has, has had so far. So if we go back to um, a time before this digital revolution that we're in right now, in order to have a business of any substantial scale, you would need something that looked a bit like this. You would need uh, large office spaces. You need lots of people doing lots of smaller jobs, quite a large infrastructure, lots of resources. So to build a business that could really scale up was quite an investment and uh, quite difficult to achieve. So what you'd see is in the uh, business indexes, the people that were always topping those indexes were, were massive um, multinational corporations with lots and lots of money. Um, and it was very difficult to break into a new industry and into a new market um, because in order to do that, you needed to fight with people that could pay for this kind of infrastructure. If we look at that today, in order to create a business that can scale and can reach uh, international audiences uh, and, and grow to this level, you just need something that looks like this. Um, so we're seeing huge amounts of new businesses, um, quite successful businesses that are started from um, someone's bedroom on the laptop. Um, and I would say that's gone even a step further, further now to a point where there's people running entire businesses from a smartphone or from a tablet um, using digital technology to help them automate tasks um, and simplify the business processes. So one person can do an awful lot. Um, this is great for, for small businesses because it means that we can now create businesses with some pretty decent scale um, using the tools available. Uh, but it also means that um, there is new disruptors, so new companies appearing in industries and disrupting those industries more than we've ever seen before. Um, so even in some of the most well, um, even in some of the biggest indexes across the world where we see huge company names, um, those industries, are, those indexes are being disrupted by small companies and new ideas uh, from people that can start with nothing more than a laptop. Um, and if we look at things like Google and Facebook and all these huge companies, a lot of them were started with some guy on a computer in a basement somewhere. Um, so actually, this is really changing the business landscape as we know it um, and will continue to change it in the future. Um, and just to look at what that future might look like, um, this funny looking uh, animation uh, is actually something that was produced by a computer called Google DeepMind. So Google DeepMind is a machine learning supercomputer. It's basically Google's machine learning program. And machine learning is kind of like the next step from artificial intelligence. So with artificial intelligence, if we think of things like um, our smart home assistant, so if anyone's got a voice assistant at home, um, these are artificial intelligence. So they're given a predefined list of answers to possible questions and challenges. Um, and it's able to determine which is the right answer based on what is being asked. Now, machine learning, on the other hand, can determine what that answer is without having that predefined list. So essentially, it's able to learn and come up with what it thinks is the best solution to what is being given. So in this scenario, Google essentially gave um, Google DeepMind this humanoid figure and said, what is the quickest way to get this humanoid figure from point A to point B across this, um, this slalom course that they created? And in, I think it was uh, three hours, it was able to figure out the mechanics of walking, although it looks kind of comical in the way it's doing it, but it's being able to figure out how to make this humanoid figure walk and get from point A to point B. Um, now, if we look at how long it takes the average human to learn the mechanics of walking, um, obviously this this computer, which had never seen this before, had never seen a human walk, it had never had any of this information, um, was able to think of this very quickly and come up with a solution. So if we look at what that could mean for the future um, and the ability to have machines that can process information faster than we can and come up with solutions faster than we can, um, it really makes for an interest, interesting proposition of what we could have in the future when it comes to business and technology. Uh, and this isn't like some very futuristic thing. This is happening at the moment. 
um, and Google are already starting to embed this machine learning into some of their services and offerings. Um, so this is actually something that we will see more of. We will see um, computers and, and, and machines that are actually doing this thinking for us or helping us um, to, to discover solutions to things. Um, and if we actually look at how technology is advancing, so this is a graph created by a company called the Emerging Future. And basically what they do is they look at how is technology affecting the future and where will it go? So they did some research and what they found is that over the next five years, we will be 32 times more technical, technologically advanced than we are today. Um, and one of the reasons why they think we will have such a growth in, in our technological advancement and capability is because as we develop new technology, that technology in turn helps us develop the next wave of technology. So we are using the technology we're developing today to help us discover new solutions um, and discover new technologies. Um, so they took this trend and looked at this kind of snowball effect that was being created. And then they looked at that over a wider period of time. And they said, based on current trends and how quickly we're developing now, if we take that and we spread that over a further time field, so we'll look at 10 years, if we follow this trend, we will be a thousand times more technologically capable in 10 years time than we are now. And then again, they looked even further. And when we get to 20 years, they said, based on the trends now, we'll be a million times more advanced. Now that looks like a, a huge jump and a very steep slope. But if we look at some of the technologies that we're already seeing and the effects that they're having in a short period of time. So for example, if we look at the development of the phone, so this was the very first smartphone that ever uh, touchscreen phone that was developed. This is the Simon and it was developed back in 1991. So if we look at from 1991, this, which looks very primitive, um, especially compared to what we have nowadays, and then think about all the things that we are doing on phones now and the new things that are being developed and how much smartphones are, are impacting our lives. We can see that in quite a short space of time, that technology has grown to a point where it is probably one of the most disruptive technologies that has happened so far. Um, if, if we think about how much, you know, the, these phones have, have, have affected us in our daily lives, but even in our business lives, you know, how many people on here use their phones to to check emails to run businesses to to check on what's going on you know and that that's a quite a small space of time and then if we look at a slightly more modern technology so this is a virtual reality headset we've actually had virtual reality for quite a long time but it's only been a commercial product or something that we can all access for a very very short period of time a couple of years really that it's actually been a commercial um, product that we can all access and in that short period of time, in just those few years that we've had access to this technology, people are already using this to develop things and learn things that they could have never done before. So in this example, someone's using it uh, as part of an engineering program to, to develop some new machinery. Um, but it's allowing us to train for um, maybe dangerous scenarios that we wouldn't want to train um, with in person. It's allowing us to experience things in a virtualized world to sort of see how things would play out in terms of simulations and things. So in a very short space of time, this has had a huge impact um, on various industries, and it's really still in the infancy of what that technology is. Um, so not only are we developing these technologies, but the growth of them is becoming more condensed. So um, arguably in, in the, the few years this has been available, um, the growth of it compared to how quickly the, the smartphone grew um, is happening much more quickly. And that is a, a trend that we're seeing with a lot of technologies. As soon as they become available, um, we're seeing people take that technology and look at how they can use it and how they can utilize it. Um, and we're seeing very quick growth and um, very quick uh, evolution of what that technology could mean and how it can be used. So we've gone through kind of the importance of digital and the effects of digital um, in, in a wide sense, but what are the effects of digital um, on, on you, on the businesses around us and the businesses in our region um, and, and what are the key points that we need to look at? So firstly, what we need to look at is what 
does a, a digital do for a business? So we'll talk more about the, the, the positives and, and how it affects businesses in a positive way. So the first thing, and this is the most common use of digital in businesses, is it can automate administrative processes. So if you think of some of the the day-to-day -day mundane tasks that take up a lot of our time, um, and as a small business, normally you're wearing many, many hats at once, the use of digital allows us to automate a lot of those processes, um, free up our time and allow us to work more on pushing that business forward. Um, and even for large businesses, automating processes allows them to, to save money and, and to become more efficient in what they're doing. Um, it allows us to collect data and make data-driven decisions. So this again has become a, a very um, big trend um, amongst all businesses, but especially like larger businesses. By collecting data of how a product or service is consumed, by looking at the data of who your consumers are and how they're interacting with your brand um, and what the industry is doing, you can find patterns within that data that allow us to determine what is the best options for us to take. Um, the most common example of this is things like digital marketing. So most people who have a website um, or use social media for business will have some form of analytics tool that will tell them how many people are looking at their website and what pages they're clicking on, which pages they, they are leaving when they see. Um, and it's allowing them to understand what their consumer wants and then adapt their offering to, to better address what that consumer wants uh, and make more sales and make more revenue. Um, and that's just a very basic example of, of data-driven decisions. Um, actually, some large businesses are using this for um, huge things. Um, there's, there's examples of people using this to look at um, how traffic moves around the city so they can make the city itself more efficient and um, reduce congestion, all sorts of things. And that's all through collecting that data in the first place. So if you've got a digital format, it's creating that order of, of patterns and, and, and trends so that we can look at that and make decisions based off it. Um, it allows us to become more efficient. And I don't just mean in the terms of, of automation as we've discussed, but by using these tools, um, we can actually look at softwares and, and packages that help us do the jobs that we're doing in a much more efficient um, and much quicker way, um, which obviously saves us time, saves us money. Um, and allows us to focus on maybe some of the, the bigger challenges that we may face as a business. Um, this is a trend that I, I'm, I'm just kind of promoting to everyone at the moment, and I'm on a bit of a, bit of a, a mad one with, with, with this, but new profit models. The way that we buy and consume has changed massively um, over the last couple of years. And with digital platforms becoming more popular, what we're seeing is that consumers prefer um, slightly different payment methods and ways of, of interacting with the brand than they have in the past. So this, this we've seen a massive drop in people that want um, transactional uh, purchases. So basically a one-off payment or um, buying something um, outright in, in, in a certain way. What people seem to be leaning towards now is the idea of subscription models, um, paying small amounts of money, but for access to something. Um, this whole idea of membership um, so by creating digital platforms, it allows many businesses to look at the ideas of new profit models. Um, and one thing that I say to a lot of the, the clients that we work with is it doesn't have to be your core product or service. So for example, if, you, if you're in manufacturing, it's going to, be, going to be very difficult to create a subscription based model to produce, you know, a washing machine, if that's what you sell. But there's things that can be added around there. There's complementary services um, and, and products that can be created to, to complement that core service, which brings in a new profit model for you. And if we think about everything that's happened over the last couple of months and, and the, everything that's happened with lockdown and people not being able to work, those new profit models and those passive income models um, allow us to create almost a safety net, uh, which is why a lot of businesses are looking at this now. So when our core services have been disrupted, we still have additional ways of making money through digital means um, that don't rely on our existing infrastructure. So this is great for making money. It's also great for safeguarding your business and your future in your business if there is large disruptions like we've seen recently. Um, 
another thing which really we've, we've seen a lot recently is decentralized workforce. So when we say this, this is really just a fancy term for saying let people work at home or let people work remotely. Um, so a lot of businesses have obviously been, have had to allow people to work from home um, and probably embrace some digital tools, tools like we're using today to do that. Um, but actually by having that concept of decentralized workforce, it allows you not just to reduce costs by not having to have as large an infrastructure for your staff, um, but it allows us to work with people that are maybe further afield. It removes the geographic barriers for, for hiring people. Um, so you can actually hire people that you think are maybe the best at that job, but don't live locally. You're no longer looking just in a local vicinity. Um, and it allows us to discover new skills and new talent um, uh, from anywhere in the world, really, because we can work in this way. Um, and again, if, we, if, if everything is going through a digital platform, it gives us new tools and assets to work with, which allows us to collaborate better, faster, collect data, look at data trends um, in our actual work, in our internal processes and how we're doing things um, and, and make decisions based on that. And uh, also it allows us to reach new customers and markets. So if we look at um, taking that product, so if we, Netflix is a good, is a good example. If you look at the model of Netflix, they were, like Blockbuster and many others, they were um, a DVD rental service. That's how they, they begun. Um, and that was fairly limited in the sense that you had to physically be able to get to that location um, and access it. They did grow to a point where they said they'll do it through the mail, which kind of expanded that reach a little bit. Um, but because they took that service and they made it completely online um, and they actually changed it to a subscription-based model, there were a lot more people that could access that service um, and, and a lot more people that were then looking at that service. Um, and then we all know obviously where Netflix is today and, and the scale it grew to. Um, but by slightly changing your uh, business model, you can reach new customers that maybe wouldn't look at your core service as it is now, but by turning that to a digital platform, uh, we found that there's a lot of people that are willing to adopt a digital platform that might not have being as interested in the core service. So it's actually a great way to bring in those new customers and additional markets. Um, and as I said, we can reduce costs and uh, avoid disruption to your business. So by having the digital platforms in place, it's much easier to run your business, it's much cheaper to run your business. And if there's any disruption, you, are, you have these safety nets in place. So just a few examples to show you um, how people have used digital to disrupt quite well-known industries, quite um, industries that you would not consider um, as digital businesses. So this is Eve, a mattress company. Um, and a few of you might know Eve, might have Eve mattresses, might have seen them on TV. But basically what they did is they took something um, that was a very physical interaction. So mattress shopping used to be, you'd, you'd go to a shop that's all beds and you'd do the awkward thing where you lay in the beds and pretend that, yeah, this is the right one. Um, they took that service and said, okay, let's put this online. Let's create a digital platform around the idea of creating a mattress. Um, so they, they created a service where you can log in, you can look at the various mattresses that are right for you. Um, or at the time, I think there was just one, but now they have a huge suite of mattresses. Um, click on it, it's delivered directly to your door, so you don't have to you know, tie a mattress to the roof of your car and do a dodgy drive down the, down the road with it. It's delivered to your door. It's all vacuum packed, so it unwraps. And then you, you can try it out for, I think it's 100 days. If you don't like it, you send it back and you get your money back. So um, they took a lot of the, what they considered pain points for um, customers. So the people didn't like sort of the way that they were shopping for mattresses and they digitized that. Because they've digitized that, um, they can now add um, a whole suite of new services to it because they're collecting data, they're looking at how people buy. Um, they started adding additional um, products. So for example, if you bought a mattress from Eve, um, and I actually did not too long ago, so I know how this, that, this is how they work. Within two or three weeks of that, they've got your email address. And they know you've bought this particular type of mattress. So you get an email from them saying, well, you bought this mattress, but actually, um, that mattress goes really well with these brand new pillars that we've developed that go with this exact mattress. And then a couple of weeks later, you get something else that's selling a, a blanket or something. Um, and it's 
for even just from a sales point of view, they're using that digital data to to understand what their customers are buying, and then they know from their uh, already collected data what products customers that buy that mattress, for example, would be more likely to buy. Um, so they're making a lot more money from from being able to have this data and sell to essentially a captive audience. Um, but they're also reducing the cost because they don't have to pay for a gigantic mattress showroom. They don't have to have people wandering around and you know, telling you about the beds. They're essentially, they've got a giant warehouse somewhere um, and a server that's running a website and this runs their entire business model for them. Um, so they're able to really increase the profits that, that they're making um, and, and keep those costs and, and, and those functions low. Um, so the reduced costs that they have, they can pass on to the customers. So actually what you're, what you're paying for, you're paying a lot less than you would if you were going to buy one of these mattresses from a showroom or from a physical location. Um, the new pricing models. So as we discussed earlier about the, the subscription models, there is actually an Eve um, subscription model. So basically you can purchase this mattress, but instead of paying outright for it, you can pay a small amount of money every month to sort of to have access to it um, until it's paid off so kind of like a you know a, a finance model um, so it's allowing people to pay for it in a different way um, which is all automated and done online it's allowing them to market it differently so because it's an online platform they could utilize social media they can use the email system that i mentioned earlier um, and upsell using that data that they've collected to get more money from every single customer. So the value of each customer is now higher to Eve because they have this data and ways of using it, which increases their revenue. Um, and also it's more convenient for the customer because we can sit at home on our phone and look through it. Um, so actually it, re it removes that, that sale hesitation. It removes people, you know, not sure if this is the right one for them because it's a much more convenient service. Um, another one to look at and, uh, Again, this is, this is a company that I think have done something really clever in the way that they've approached this. So Monzo is a digital only bank. So you can't find a Monzo bank on the high stream. It's digital only, everything goes through an app. Now Monzo started originally as kind of, um, it, it was a small bank, it was, it was, uh, it was a small app, um, got some funding. It's now one of the, the, the biggest growing uh, banks in the UK. And actually what we're seeing is a lot of people, especially the sort of younger audience, um, are actually moving all their accounts to Monzo accounts. I actually use a Monzo account for, for all of my personal banking and business banking as well. And um, it's becoming more of a trend um, and people are liking the way that this business works because they've kept it digital. Basically it's allowing them to, um, as Eve did, reduce costs and pass that saving on to the customers. So for example, um, with Monzo, all of their charges, uh, uh, bank charges and things like that, are hugely um, reduced compared to the main high street banks. So for, if you look at, I don't know, maybe um, a student or someone, a younger person that's probably dipping in and out of their overdraft quite a lot, um, Monzo is able to put a, a cap on it that says that no matter how much you go into this overdraft and how long you're in it, you'll never pay more than 15 pounds ever. And they're able to do that because it costs them nothing to do that. They have no infrastructure. They are a digital only service. So they've passed that on to customers, knowing that younger people, you know, especially uh, are in that situation. And that is something they're worried about. They're worried about the bank charges and, and the cost to them. So they've removed that. Um, they've also looked at new pr pricing models for it. So um, in general, Monzo is free, but it's what we call a freemium service. So although it's free, there are premium features that you can sign up to for a small amount of money every month um, and, and have what they call the Monzo Pro account. So basically, um, Monzo said, okay, well, if you're looking at controlling your money online, if you're a younger person controlling your money online, what are the things that might be important to you? So things like your credit report can be pulled into Monzo, so in this one app you can control all of your spending but also look at how that's affecting your credit. Um, and it has information on how to save money, how to look at getting first time mortgages and things. So they've really looked at how their customers are, what their customers are wanting and how they're interacting with money. 
and then they're using that to offer additional services, which they're charging a, a premium rate for. Um, and with the digital platform, they're able to create a better user experience as well. So one thing that Monza is known for is its customer service. It has fantastic customer service because they're able to do this all in real time through a chat system built into the app. Um, they've got um, a small amount of people based in the UK that monitor it. Uh, and because it's all digital, one person can actually manage and look after a lot of people at the same time and offer customer service to all of them um, and be able to see what the customer is looking at as well. So they're very well known for this, for their customer service and how they look after the customers, which is facilitated by the fact it's a digital platform. Um, and because they can collect this data, they've actually built some very, very cool features into the app. So they have a feature that they tested a year or two back um, called Drunk Mode. Um, and this basically would, it was able to detect where payments were going, um, not just the, the name of the payment um, vendor, but also what type of business that was using the data that they had. So for example, if I'd spent a hundred pounds in various bars and weather spoons and whatever else, um, it would basically recognize that I was in drunk mode um, and it would do things like it would reduce spending in certain areas. It would stop you spending certain amounts online. Um, you could set a cap at the start of the night and say, I'm going out. I don't want to spend more than a hundred pounds tonight. When you hit that cap, it would stop you spending unless it was being spent on a taxi service or transport to get home. Um, so they, they'd be able to build in all these kind of features that um, they thought would be useful to their customers, but it was all driven by data. It's all driven by understanding um, how people were, were using the platform. Um, and also, especially from a business point of view, they, they, they're able to integrate with other um, systems because it's a digital platform. So if you're a small business and you're using Xero, for example, to manage your accounts, um, if you've got a Monzo business account, it automatically integra integrates with Xero. So all of your accounting is done automatically for you. You don't have to do anything. All your expenses are recorded. Um, or if you go for a meal with friends and you know you need to split the bill, they have a system called Monzo.me, which allows you to um, essentially send um, a, a, a link to all your friends so they can pay their share of that meal and it's all automatically worked out. So they've taken a, an industry that is very well known for um, be, you know, being uh, large infrastructure based businesses and they've managed to automate a lot of that and essentially create a completely digital platform that does that same thing. Um, and if we look at how that is affecting roles, how digital is affecting roles as well, um, we're also seeing similar trends but on a personal level. So things like um, how efficient we are, the, the idea of automation. Um, these digital tools are allowing us to be more efficient in our jobs, as we mentioned earlier. Um, it's allowing us to automate mundane repetitive tasks um, so that we actually have more free time. It allows us to work remotely, which is actually what's allowing us to continue working today while a lot of people are still in lockdown or, or are not wanting to go back into their office. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, it allows us to bring in new skills and things. Um, it increases uh, our communication, collaboration and management. Um, so I know that for, for our business, we, we work across a, a variety of different projects and um, we're, we're all in different places doing different things at different times. So having these online tools and these digital platforms allows us to have constant communication with the team so we all know where we are and what we're doing. It allows us to collaborate when we do need to work together. Um, and it allows us to manage what we're doing um, and keep it all organized so that things don't get missed. Um, and I think now, especially with all the disruption going on, this is key. But going forward beyond the, the whole idea of this lockdown, um, this allows us to do what we do better. So um, I, I think these, these tools are still very important even after this disruption. Um, and also by embracing these technologies, we learn new skills, which makes us more valuable to employers or to people we may work with or to our employees if we are um, a business owner. Um, so now a lot of people when they're hiring for jobs, they will actually specify software packages and things that they want you to learn or that they want you to be uh, proficient in before you go do the job. So if you're an accountant, the chances are many job applications now will ask you, 
do you know how to use Zero or do you know how to use Sage or whatever the software is that they're using? Um, and that will be a key factor in whether you're taken on for that role or not. Um, so these digital skills are now actually becoming um, a core of, of, of business and not just um, sort of a bolt on, they're actually becoming a, a core feature of, of these uh, jobs and roles. So as I mentioned, uh, Zero is a, a good example of um, an automated platform that is helping people do their jobs. Um, so if you're an accountant, you can use Zero to automate your workflow, make you a lot quicker. Um, so you can get a lot of your work done uh, much more quickly through this. It provides better insights. So because it's data driven, um, it provides you with insights and things that you can use to make better decisions for your business or your employer. Um, a lot of these platforms also um, have accreditations that come with them. So you actually can become a zero accredited accountant. So you actually can learn how to use this software well enough to get an accreditation, which is actually, which does actually hold weight. And actually um, a lot of employers um, do um, look for things like this. So it is great for people looking for work. And if you are a business owner, it's great to, to have this as well so that you can um, pass this on to your employees or people that you may work with. It allows us to work from anywhere, not just home really. It allows us to work from anywhere that we may be. So if you don't have a, if you have a decentralized team, you can still all work together um, and, and um, you can still do the job you need to do from anywhere using these digital platforms. And the big thing is it's a lot of data on a small screen. So for example, if you're managing multiple accounts, um, if, you're, if you are an accountant that is looking after maybe multiple businesses, doing that in a physical, manual process is actually very difficult it's very time consuming there's a lot to manage this sort of platform allows you to take huge amounts of data so it allows you to take multiple accounts multiple clients and put them all onto one screen one area of focus um, and manage that and that's we're talking about Zero as an example but there's lots of softwares that allow you to do that in various formats um, so for example if you are work with multiple clients and you need to track lots of projects it's very easy to kind of have that run away and lose track of how many different projects you're working on and what's going on with all of those different projects. But if you have a project management system, um, that allows you to take the data from all those different clients, organize it, and through one screen, whether that be a laptop, a phone, or a tablet, you have full access to all that data. You can keep track of all those projects, um, and one person can manage multiple things fairly easily. Um, and this is probably one of the biggest assets to digital is the reason why I myself have I've put a lot of time into looking at digital ways of doing a lot of the work I do. It means that as one person with one laptop, I'm able to manage many, many things um, with ease really, because I'm, I'm using um, the power of digital to do a lot of the work for me. Um, and also one that we should, we, we will all be familiar with right now is um, online collaboration tools. So things like Teams, uh, Skype, um, Zoom, we've probably all used them a lot um, recently, but also just in our day-to-day -day work, I mean, even before um, the, the lockdown happened, um, a lot of businesses were using things like Slack um, or, or Facebook Workplace to communicate and to organize the work and collaborate better. Um, so these collaboration tools, um, are great for businesses, especially smaller businesses that don't want to have to keep going through lots and lots of emails and want to have um, what I call like a more conversation-based conversation, conversation based, um, work workflow. Um, so it allows them to collaborate and communicate better and get rid of um, sort of all these back and forths. Um, it means that they're wasting less time through, you know, spending two hours every morning going through your inbox to try and figure out which is important and which isn't. Um, you have a quick, easy to access tool. Um, again, allows you to work from anywhere. And it creates a better internal culture as well. So um, there may be a lot of you on today that um, are, maybe you work on your own or you just one or two of you. Um, or there may be people that have um, a couple of people that work with them and have a, a, a small or medium sized team. Um, if you are working with multiple people, this platform, these sort of platforms are not just great for the business side of it, but for um, creating that internal culture that actually adds strength to your brand and to your business. Um, so by having these tools and allowing people to communicate 
Um, it's actually people like Google have looked into this because the, the traditional way of running a business was everyone should keep their heads down and just get the work done. Um, but a lot of companies have, have kind of realized that actually that, that bond and that internal culture actually makes all of your staff much more productive and therefore you get better work out the other end of it. Um, so this tool kind of allows you to do that in a less distracting way than people um, chatting all day and maybe not producing what they need to produce. This allows them to have that internal culture, but also um, kind of limits it to a point where they can still be productive in what they're doing and, and, and collaborate on the projects they need to collaborate on. So how will digital affect roles in the future? This is kind of a, a guess. We don't really know. Um, as we said, digital is growing so fast that what we see digital as today in five years will probably be completely irrelevant, completely different. So it's kind of a game of, of trying to play catch up with our own learning and development of, of digital. Um, but if we look at the trends of today and how that may impact us in the future, we're looking at things like the less of a need for office time. Uh, and obviously with what's going on at the moment, the, this is sort of being amplified, but um, for a long time, the, the move to remote working um, has been a, a, tr a growing trend um, in lots of industries. So um, the, there's a good chance that that future um, for many roles, business owners and employees um, may contain less face-to-face -face contacts, maybe more digital, more remote, and that may be the future that we're looking at. Um, it will mean that we're able to do things much faster. So we'll have to work much more quickly. Um, but also that means that we'll be able to grow much more quickly um, because it will give us more time to focus on other aspects of our job um, or our role or our businesses rather than just the day-to-day the -day processes that we need to run. Um, so, you know, I mean, what, what could you do with that free time if you took away all of the time you have to spend in a day checking your emails and doing the same kind of copy and paste jobs, if they were all removed, you know, how productive could you be at that time? How much could you push your business forward? Um, you know, I, I think that with, with our businesses, um, if I had a lot, all that free time and we didn't have to sit and respond to emails and things, what, what could we do? Um, so it, it, that's a, an interesting to consider for the future and how that may change how we work. Positive or negative depends on your outlook, but I think we the trends show that there will be a necessity to learn new skills. So software will not just be um, will not just be a bolt on; it will be part of your core skills. So just having the core skills of I know accounts or I know how to make this particular product won't be enough in the future. Um, the, all the trends shown actually we're seeing this with all industries now the necessity to understand the digital platforms that come along with that industry um, are becoming um, a key part of, of, of our growth and our business growth. Um, so do I, I, it, it's fair to say that that trend will lead to a point where it's a necessity to learn all the softwares and tools as well as the job or the skill itself. Um, but that will also give us better access to jobs or if you employ a better access to skills. So there'll be more people in more places that have the ability to do this job, do, do it to a high standard. Um, and with less need for office space, it means that actually we can bring people on from all over the place that are the best at that job um, and, and work through these tools. So actually it does also open up that market for us um, and make it a little bit easier for developing and finding skills. Okay. so. How do we develop this digital knowledge? So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to go through a list of various tools that you can use um, to learn some of these skills yourself, how to digitize your business, how to embrace digital. Um, or if you want to show this to, to employees or people working with, if you want to upskill that workforce, um, these tools are, are fairly universal. Um, and I'll go through some of the, the pros and cons of them and how they work and you guys can determine if these are relevant for you and which one's the, the best choice. So the first one to look at is uh, Google Digital Garage. Um, so Google created this platform uh, basically to teach people all the digital skills, core digital skills they think that they will need. Um, it covers business, it covers personal, it, it covers just about every type of digital need that you may have. 
And this is a series of online video courses that you can access. Um, and some of them are accredited. So we've got the, the Digital Garage Award on the left there. Some of them are actually accredited um, courses. So you can learn digital marketing through it and you can learn all sorts of other things. Some of them are more informational things just so you understand how to use digital platforms better. Uh, but it's all um, collated by Google's team um, and they're pulling all these videos and courses and information um, based on what they think is the best information for each topic. Um, the biggest benefit to Google Digital Garage is that it is completely free to anybody. So none of it's paid, it's all 100% free, the accreditations are free. Um, and if you have spare time, even if you are really on top of, of your um, digital knowledge and you really think that you're, you know what you're doing, it's still worth looking at because there's various other things that you may see that you haven't, that you don't know. Um, and it's free accreditations, which is it's always great for LinkedIn. So it's, it's worth having a look through. Um, the second platform, which is a slightly different take on the idea of, of this digital training is Skillshare. So Skillshare works in a slightly different way to the others where it's actually a platform that allows people with this particular skill to share that skill with others. So you would, it isn't an, an official body as such that's creating these courses. Um, they are just people that are recognized as being very good at what they do. Um, and they can create online courses. They're, they're all checked and, and looked at by people before they're published so that they know that they're about a high enough standard. Um, and you can sign up and you can watch these courses from various people and learn the skills they already know. So it's a slightly different approach to it. and in a way, I suppose, a much more uh, friendly approach because you're learning from an individual. Um, they do have some free access, um, but for, for the main access, it's, it's a subscription model, um, but it's either eight or $10. I think that's actually gone up slightly, but it's, it, it's a few pounds a month, so it's not a huge amount, um, but it allows you to gain skills and learn things from all these, these various people. Um, a more robust platform is Udemy. So Udemy is actually the world's largest online course provider. Um, they have courses on everything that you can think of. I mean, they, they cover everything that comes from um, digital and learning digital, um, from the business side of it, to personal use of it, to marketing, to developing your own apps, to everything uh, from a basic level to an advanced level. Um, the benefit of Udemy, um, if you are looking at learning specific things, is it's pay per course. So you are able to just pick the courses that are relevant to you and just pay for that one course. So it's not a subscription model or signing up to the entire service. You can kind of pick and choose your own um, learning path and what you want to learn. Um, so a lot of people like to use this if there's maybe particular gaps in their knowledge that they feel needs uh, needed fixing so you can go onto this and then look at um, that particular um, knowledge gap and, and, and use Udemy to learn what you need to learn. Um, if there's people that are on today and they're thinking all oh, that seems a bit advanced for me actually I really just need to get to grips with the basics um, and there is still a lot of people that are um, getting used to some of the more basic areas of digital and technology um, Barclays have the Digital Eagles or the Dig Digital Eagle Labs. Um, so this is a service through Barclays. Um, I don't think it's restricted to Barclays customers. Um, I think it's you can just apply. Um, and they have, if you go on the Digital Eagles website, they have uh, workshops and courses and things that you can take part in to learn basic digital skills. Um, and a lot of these are physical events. I'm guessing that they probably aren't now, um, but that but the core service is that they do workshops and you can all come together and, and, and upskill digitally um, as a team, um, which covers, it is more the basic side of it, but um, maybe if you've got an employee that's great at what they do, but just can't get their head around the basics of digital technology, um, this is a great starting point. Oh, and then it can lead on to some of the other platforms we discussed. Um, and also for some people, you may actually already have this digital knowledge yourself, and it actually may be about how do you pass that on to your employees and to your team members. So Google Classroom is, again, because it's Google, it's a completely free service, um, which allows you to create your own online training platforms. So it's, it was originally developed for schools, for the classroom. 
Um, but it's being used more and more by businesses um, to train their staff internally, to pass on information and to create a, a knowledge base. Um, so if there is, maybe there's some specific software that you are using within your business, maybe you've got your own software that you use and you want to make sure that your staff are trained on it uh, and using it correctly, you can use this kind of platform for free to, to create those courses and, and track people through them. So you know that people are, are up to scratch with, with the digital platforms you want them to use. Um, and I think, um, Wayne, did you have an idea of how people could yeah. use this? Yeah, thanks, Jamie. There's uh, just a couple of other things just to jump in there. Just uh, I'm quite conscious we're coming with quite short on time and come to the end. I just want to let everybody know about um, the extra support that's available. But all those platforms that Jamie's just mentioned are, are really great platforms and they're all accessible. And I know you're sending some questions through about what's accessible in terms through Barclays and things. My understanding is that um, Barclays is, is free for, for anyone to, to visit and get support with. Um, and oh, Rob's answering the question there, so there's uh, some <laughs> but uh yeah the um another thing to look at is one most of you are probably on linkedin so linkedin have linkedin learning it is a subscription based platform but it's riddled with thousands and thousands and thousands of great courses on everything you can imagine in terms of the digital sphere and i think if you subscribe to linkedin learning i think it's about 20 pound a month but i think if you subscribe to it as well you become a premium linkedin member if you're into that it's an it's an added bonus that comes with it so that's one to look at um, but another thing you can do, and this is something that Adenic Group do. So we go work with clients all over the world on and helping them develop um, innovation strategies and coming up with new products and adding value, etc. And of course, a big part of that is the embrace digital element and its digital adopt adoption and helping them to understand that. Um, and one of the uh, one of the tasks that we give, and it's we found it really really effective, is to set your team a technology to go away and learn. So if there's five of you in your business, for example, you know, Google the top 10 technologies in businesses. Now there's so many links out there. If you just find it, you'll come up and you'll get things like uh, virtual reality, or augmented reality, or um, smartphones or whatever. There'll be lots of things that comes up and just randomly assign one technology to each colleague or maybe a team of two or whatever, however you want to do it, break it into groups, assign a technology to each one and have them go away and research that technology find out what it's about, how it works, where it came from, what does it do, who's using it, and then come back and present that back to the team. So they almost become the educators of that piece of technology and telling the rest of the group, listen, we found this, this is how it works, this is what it does, this is um, how it's been used today. Then once each, per each group has done that, Another cool thing to do then is together run an ideation session to establish how would you use that piece of technology to, to each of your roles within the business. Um, so if you're in the HR role and someone presents to you about um, the cool use of augmented reality, um, how would the HR team, how could they adopt that technology to aid their role or add value to their role or do something different with it? And it's amazing the ideas that come out of this and you start finding all sorts of cool ways of working. Um, for some reason, Wayne's Wells just appeared on my, on my <laughs> screen. Um, uh, so all really cool ways of working. Um, and uh, it's a really good way just to brainstorm and learn about new technologies. We do this with clients all over the world and it's really, really effective. So highly recommend that you try that. Um, I'm just going to quickly move on um, just because uh, I'm just aware we're really into the last minutes now. But um, as, as, in addition to all of the uh, softwares and the things that we've talked about, uh, there's also us. Um, and um, very apt, my name's Wayne, so this all works really well. Um, but uh, the, 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 the support, as I said at the start of the uh, webinar, that's available from... Um, uh, from the Humber Growth Hub, I'm just going to skip off this because it's actually distracting me, uh, is, um, it, it's quite wide. And uh, the technology adoption support is a, is a really big part of it. And one of the programs um, is called um, the Digital Catalyst. Um, so we start with the weekly ICT for Growth webinars, which is essentially what you're on now. So there's lots and lots of these that are happening. Um, and just to give you a quick update, there's a few of these coming up now. So these are ones for your diary. Um, but there's actually loads of them from all different experts covering all different uh, aspects of digital and creative and business development and all sorts of things. So if you, um, if you vi actually visit the growth of website, you can see a whole list of these and, and book on and have a look. Um, there's, there's so much support available out there. Um, 
but uh, they, there's also wider support where it's actually more one-to-one -one tailored ex expert support. So if, if you're on this call today and you're thinking, okay, that's great, but how does that apply to my specific business? I'm in a very particular niche area. How do I add value? How am I going to use digital to help me grow or help me get out of a situation? This one-to-one -one support that's available um, is really going to help you do that. Um, and again, it's completely free of charge. So the Digital Catalyst program is called, um, and essentially it's uh, consultants like Edenic, and there's lots of others that are available. They come into your business and they work with you specifically on your business to um, help you embrace, adopt digital. Firstly, to navigate any troubles or barriers that you might be having right now, but also to help you grow the business, find new revenue, find new markets. Um, the basic run of it kind of runs like this, you know, so it starts with a digital benchmarking. So this is um, a, a process that we go through with the business where we look at where are you at now? How are you already adopting digital technology? What do you, how, you know, how are you already thinking about digital? Uh, are you are you embracing it? Is it something that's even in your consideration? Is it part of your business plan? Do you have a digital strategy? We start looking at all that and then that benchmark essentially gives us um, a result at the end that says this is kind of where your business is. You're particularly strong in this area. You're not particularly strong in this area. You could be doing more here. Um, and this becomes essentially the stimulus for what then li links to a workshop. And this is where the consultant will come to your business or we might have to do it virtually. It depends on each scenario. But we work with you and your team using the results of the benchmark and after understanding a little bit more about your business um, to establish new ideas. And we start going through what digital technology is available, um, where you could be adopting this, where it would help your business, where it would help your business grow. Um, and it becomes very much a tailored one-to-one -one direct support um, to give you a, a whole new, a whole new perspective of where you could be going. Um, and again, as Jeremy touched upon earlier on, digital is advancing rapidly. Um, and, you know, five and 10 and 20 years isn't actually that far away. We're, we're, we're moving very quickly. So you need to be aligning. If you're thinking, how is the business going to grow? How are we going to move forward? You need to be making this a consideration if you're, gonna, if you're going to grow. And frankly, if you're going to survive, because this is where disruption is coming. It's coming from digital. So we'll run the workshop off the back of the workshop. Then essentially we deliver an action plan. So as we say, look, this is what we found. This is where we think you could be going. These are the things that you could be doing. Here's some opportunities for you. Um, and then uh, the next step, the next step after that is to kind of signpost you to people that can help support you in this area. So these might be technology providers locally. Um, this might be funding that's available that you can draw upon. Uh, this might be um, partnerships that you could be looking at. It might be new courses that you could be doing. There's lots and lots of different things. Every circumstance is very individual according to your business. But it's not just giving you an action plan and then running. It's giving you an action plan and then saying, here's how you can actually action it. Um, and then, of course, yeah, linking link to technology providers and linking you to people that can um, help you deliver the stuff that we uh, that we come up with. We've done a few of these in the last couple of months. And I have to say, some of the stuff that's come out from businesses, it's just been amazing. You know, stuff that they'd never even thought about or considered. And at the end of it, we're, we're on a whole new trajectory of where they were taking the business. So it really is worth uh, getting involved. Um, you know, here it is in a nutshell, one-to-one -one support essentially looking for new products, new clients, new ways of delivering your business, um, enhancing your customer offer, um, linking you to grants and funding. It, you know, it, it, I mean, it says handholding, but that's essentially what it is. It's just direct support to, to take you through a process and help you navigate stuff. It's hard to see this stuff when you're in the business, and we know this is business owners. It's really hard to see it when you're in the business because you can't, almost you can't see the wood for the trees. And having that expert ex, um, external influence come in and say, look, here's our view of it, um, it gives you a whole new um, fresh perspective. These are some of the stuff. These by nowhere from ex uh, are exhaustive, you know, but like cybersecurity, online accounting, putting your stuff on the cloud, um, new tools and applications for product productivity, customer relationship. These are some of the technologies that we might look at while we're talking about it. Um, but actually, it could go into any number of spheres. Um, but, you know, it's helping you identify technology. It's helping you um, tackle challenges that are there using digital technology, um, integrating with existing systems. We're not talking about replacing what you're already doing. We're trying to complement it and make the job easier. Um, and uh, and be able to evolve and be agile and that and that's it's a really 
uh, a key thing to do, you know, be, be able to be flexible. The COVID thing has really amplified this to just about every industry in the world. At the end of the day, um, everyone was disrupted. And for, you know, for a moment in time, nobody could deliver what they were already doing. So nobody could make money. And this is where agility comes in and having digital technology and being digital ready is so important. If I can't do tomorrow what um, I usually do, where is my revenue coming from? How am I making money? And how is my business going to continue? And you need to be thinking about this, you know, it's, it's not scaremongering. You know, if there was to come up with a second lockdown towards the end of the year and decide there's a massive spike, how are you going to navigate that? If there's a new thing that happens next year, another disruption, somebody else comes and delivers your business in a completely different revolutionary way, as in like Netflix, the blockbuster video, imagine that that's happening literally every single day. So you need to be navigating and thinking, how can I be flexible and get around this? Um, but ultimately, you know, we're here to help you grow make more money, be flexible, increase efficiency. That's what it's all about. Um, so if you want to get involved in the digital catalyst program, uh, here's some details on the screen. You can go to the grow my SME, um, website, grow my SME.co.uk forward slash ICT forward slash digital catalyst. Um, can someone actually just copy that link and put it in the chat, Jamie or Rob, would you mind? Just cause it's really hard for people to, people have to screenshot it and stuff like that. Um, or there's a number, there's a yeah. number to call there. Um, uh, 01482 uh, the team at Winning Moves they're the people that are managing this program they'll be able to uh, make all the relevant links for you and be able to make that happen um, but yeah this, this thing is in place really to support you it's completely free of charge it's around about 12 hours of support so you kind of it's about two or three hours doing the digital maturity assessment to see where you are and then about nine hours actually doing a workshop and the roadmap and piecing it all together um, but you know if We'll work through all of the stuff that we've talked about today in terms of what's available, what training's available, how you can um, use digital technology. All of this stuff will be talked about, but it will be applied directly to your business and your particular circumstance. Um, with that, if anyone's got any further questions, I know there's been stuff coming through. I think the boys have been answering there. So, but if there's any further questions, please raise your hands. Uh, sorry, raise your hands. <laughs> put, put, put a question in the notes rather. Sorry, I feel like I'm in one of these classrooms. Um, and also, if you wouldn't mind, I've just launched, uh, I'm just launching a poll. If you wouldn't mind just taking 20 seconds just to answer the questions on the poll, it just helps us to establish what future webinars to put on, how effective they are, how helpful they are, if you're getting the information you need from it. So if you wouldn't mind just quickly um, throwing your answers down in that, that would be really helpful. Yeah, there's, um, sorry, uh, there's actually a really good example that was posted in the chat that I think is worth mentioning as well. Okay. Um, so sorry, let me find it. So uh, Sal Cook had mentioned uh, Fortnite. Um, so for people out there, Fortnite is a, a video game, very very popular video game among children, um, and they actually created um, a platform for basically teaching parents what Fortnite was and how it works, the risks associated, and all that kind of. So they essentially created almost like a, an information and training platform for, for parents of, of children that use their game. Um, so I think it's, there's an element of not just teaching or, or informing people directly using that platform, but maybe also um, sort of these secondary people that may interact with it um, and, and creating those kind of those training platforms. But it is a really good example. Um, very few companies, especially game companies, um, consider the worries and things that a parent may have when the children are um, uh, are using the game so them creating that kind of training platform for parents on how it works and online gaming i think is a, is a really cool example of, of digital upskilling and training yeah thanks jamie um and, and this is all again all stuff we'll touch upon when when you go into the workshop and we start working with your business directly um so you know all of these all of these ideas and and concepts and suggestions that are coming out you know we can apply specifically to your situation um, guys, I'm really conscious that we've run over, so I'm really uh, apologize for those that need to get to new meetings and stuff, but I hope this has been really helpful. Uh, we are here to support you. Use, use the contact details um, that we've put in the chat there for the digital catalyst or, um, or, or call the number or um, any, any questions you've got after this, you're very welcome to email through um, and we'll, we can come back to you. And the chances are if you sign up to the digital catalyst program, it's likely to be the Edenic team or one of the local consultants here that actually comes and works with you. So we can, we can address your things, um, uh, your particular businesses specifically. Um, with that, thank you very much. Thanks very much for Jamie for taking us through that. Thank you. Um, and thanks to Rob. 
um, for being on the call and fielding these questions. And we look forward to seeing you at the next webinar. Until then, take care. Best wishes.